Hello, this session of Anatomy and Physiology and Medical Terminology is going to focus on the lymphatic and immune system. The lymphatic and immune system is going to have two purposes. First, we have two sets of vessels in our body. Most people are familiar with the vessels of the cardiovascular system, the arteries, veins, and capillaries. However, most people don't realize that we have a second set of vessels in our body, the vessels of the lymphatic system. These vessels are going to be important because anything that is too large to be carried by the vessels of the cardiovascular system will in turn be picked up by the vessels of the lymphatic system. Also, fluid which is seeping out of the vessels of the cardiovascular system will constantly be bathing all the cells in our body. We refer to that as interstitial fluid. And this interstitial fluid has to constantly be filtered and clean for lack of a better way to put it and the vessels of the lymphatic system are going to pick up this fluid that is seeped out from the cardiovascular system and it's going to help return this fluid that's been cleaned to the cardiovascular system we call fluid that enters the vessels of the lymphatic system lymph it's a clear fluid very similar to plasma however it doesn't have the clotting proteins that plasma has and when it's going through the vessels of the lymphatic system, it's going to travel through many lymphatic structures called lymph nodes. And the lymph nodes are going to act like filters to filter out anything that shouldn't be in this lymph, including pathogens. And of course, pathogens are any kind of a foreign invader which are setting out to do us harm. It could be a bacteria, it could be a virus, it could be a fungus any of these things that are trying to invade our body and use it as a host to replicate itself these are all pathogens and of course the lymphatic system is going to be important in transporting things that can't be transported by the cardiovascular system but also this secondary benefit of protecting our body from foreign invaders now we have some very important organs associated with the lymphatic system as I already mentioned we have the vessels of the lymphatic system we also have the lymph nodes. They are plentiful throughout the body, especially in the torso region and the groin region. We also have the spleen, which is very important because the spleen is one of the largest lymphatic structures. It also helps to get rid of worn out red blood cells. Red blood cells have about a 120 day lifespan. And so these structures, these red blood cells, will be taken out of circulation by the spleen. So that's a very important function of this lymphatic organ. We also have the thymus gland. And the thymus gland is going to be important in our immunity because it creates T lymphocytes. All lymphocytes are going to ultimately be either T cells or B cells. B cells gain their ability to fight pathogens in the bone marrow. That's why we refer to them as B lymphocytes. Whereas T lymphocytes will actually migrate to the thymus gland. And of course the thymus gland is where the T lymphocytes get their name. T lymphocytes. T for thymus. Something interesting about the thymus gland, it's actually at its largest during our early formative years, and then as we age towards adulthood, it actually gets smaller. It may not even show up on scans as a person reaches maturity. Now, this is significant because if somebody isn't exposed to a lot of pathogens early in their lifespan, as an adult, if they get exposed to a great number of pathogens, they won't have the immune function of somebody who was ultimately out and about a lot, exposed to a lot of different pathogens from a lot of different sources, and built up a great immune system in their early formative years. That's why kids, when they start kindergarten or pre-K, they come home and they are sick every day, and of course they spread it to the family as well. But when they are exposed to all of these different pathogens that are out there, that gives them a much stronger immune function later down the road in their adult years. If, for example, a kid was homeschooled from K through 12 and then went to a large college after high school, well then, because they were only around a very small number of people throughout their formative years of life, they wouldn't have the immune function as an adult that somebody who'd gone to public school or maybe a school that had a large number of students would have in their adult years. So again, it's very interesting that the thymus, this organ of the lymphatic system, 
actually get smaller and may even completely disappear as a person reaches adulthood. Now, concerning medical terminology associated with the lymphatic and immune system, spleno is a combining form that means spleen. Okay? We also have this suffix, ectomy, and ectomy means a surgical removal of something. If we combine the suffix ectomy with the combining form spleno, we get splenectomy. Okay? So that's going to be the surgical removal of the spleen. Okay. The next term, tonsillo, of course, means tonsil. That's a combining form that we can add to a suffix like ectomy and get the term tonsillectomy, removal of the tonsils. Okay, everybody's probably heard of a tonsillectomy. Now, another term that we just discussed when we were talking about lymph nodes was inguinal. Inguino is the combining form that means groin. AL is a suffix which means pertaining to. So if we have the term inguinal, it means pertaining to the groin. Somebody may have inguinal lymph nodes that are inflamed. Or, getting into another chapter, somebody may have a gastrointestinal issue where they have an inguinal hernia, where a section of the intestines has pushed through the abdominal musculature, creating a bulge in the lower muscular region of the inguinal creases. Another term that we're going to hear a lot of in this chapter concerning the lymphatic and immune system is lympho. Okay. Of course, that's going to be part of our subject heading. Lympho means lymph. Okay. And as we said, the lymph itself is going to be a clear fluid very similar to plasma. If we add the suffix edema, we then get the term lymphedema. Lymphedema Lymphedema is a condition where fluid from the lymphatic system gets into the tissues and cannot be collected by the vessels of the lymphatic system. This fluid continues to accumulate, especially in the lower appendages, and in some cases can produce appendages which are quite grotesque in terms of size and appearance and definitely hinder a patient's ability to be mobile and ambulate on their own. Now, one other interesting term associated with the lymphatic system is antigen. This is a unique term because it comes from the prefix anti, which means against, and the combining form geno, which means to produce, or the beginning. Just like in the Bible, the, term, the chapter Genesis means the beginning, in the beginning. So this term Okay, means against producing or against the beginning. And what an antigen is, is going to be something that's unique to every cell in our body. For example, every cell in my own body might have a marker, and just to keep it simple, we will call the marker a K marker for the first letter of my first name. And that is referred to as an antigen. Okay? Antigens allow cells to realize that all cells in the body belong to this person. So my muscle cells may have a K associated with them. 
My liver cells may have a K associated with them. The cells of my integumentary system, my skin, may have a K associated with it. If a foreign invader gets into our body, the foreign invader called a pathogen, and we'll just make it a P antigen, would quickly be noticed by our immune system and ultimately destroyed by either T lymphocytes or B lymphocytes. So in this unit, we're going to discuss the terms associated with the lymphatic and immune system and delve further into the dual purpose of the lymphatic and immune system, its transportation functions, as well as its ability to protect us from foreign invaders. So we look forward to getting into this chapter and learning more about this second set of vessels that's in our body.